Hey folks, good afternoon. My name is Kerry Martin and this is the Handyman 406 channel. Welcome, welcome. Anyways, I just want to talk about a few things here, uh, namely wind generators and what to buy, what not to buy, some, some tips. Anyways, just to get to the point here. All right, so I got a pic couple pictures here of uh, wind generators. You notice these are the, the big commercial type that you often see driving through the countryside. And there's kind of like a little scale of how big these things actually are. They're pretty doggone gigantic. And over the years, they have perfected these designs. And many, many millions of dollars have gone into them, into the design features of these, of these wind generators. And kind of brought them to the apex, if you will, of, of their efficiency. One thing I want you to take note, several things I want you to take note of here is, for one, these are horizontal, what they call HOTS. H-A-W-T. These are horizontal axis wind turbines, okay? And the other type would be considered a VOT. Okay, so I just pulled up an example of a VOT here. Uh, vertical axis wind turbine uh, here on Wikipedia. There's not a lot of commercial examples of these, but this is uh, it's saying here this is the world's tallest vertical axis wind turbine. I, l I live nearby Bozeman, Montana. We actually have a, well, down below Bozeman, there's a town called Belgrade, and there's a, there's a building that has a couple of these VOTs um, right there on, on their sign that they're advertising. I guess it's a great way to catch somebody's eye, but that's about it. You know, you don't see a lot of commercial examples of these things, mainly because they, you know, they work, yeah, but there's a lot of limitations to them. Namely, they're, you can't get those high up in the air without huge infrastructure, and, and that's the reason why you know, uh, these don't, these aren't as efficient for the money that being put into them as a horizontal wind turbine. So, and we'll talk about a little bit more about that in a minute, you know, but mainly, you know, the higher up in the airstream that you get a wind generator. All right. So, uh, sorry about that. Had a little interruption. Thought somebody was knocking on my door. So this is why I wouldn't recommend buying a version of this, like let's say on eBay or, you know, various Various people have tried to sell these, and um, for whatever reason, they look interesting, and, and people seem to go for it. But this, you know, the horizontal wind generator is the one that you want to go for. It's something else I want you to notice is every single one of these commercial examples have three blades. All right, we'll see a lot of examples. Let me see if I can pull one up here. Uh, scroll down through these pictures. We'll see a lot of examples of multi-bladed wind generators. A generator having more than three blades and the reason why um, that's not a good idea is because this has one two three four five blades and you know the generator itself might have been designed around this and might work okay but there's some physics behind uh, having three blades that actually make sense and uh, the reason being each you know intuitive intuitively we want to believe that the more blades you put on there, the more wind it's going to catch. And that's just really not the case. I just want you to take a look at some of these. These are actually one-bladed wind generators, okay? They, on this opposite end, they have like a counterweight, uh, which, they, which they keep close to the main axis, uh, mainly because they don't want to disturb the, the airstream. So this blade, you can say, is 100% efficient. It doesn't have the airstream of the blade in front of it, to actually disrupt it and so it's got a clean airstream as clean as it can get while it's rotating and these tend to spin faster in rpms than the two bladed designs and the three bladed designs now if we scroll down here we'll have a two bladed this happens to be one of my favorite configurations for homemade wind turbines mainly because they're so easy to make and i show in a video uh, how you can make one out of a solid piece of wood um, quickly and within an hour or two it's carved and it it's actually quite efficient it works really well and I've, I've used them a lot but here's a big commercial example of a two bladed here's some larger one bladed examples um, this might be like a consumer model and this actually is a downwind model as well that's why you're not seeing the tail vane on it <clears throat> and these uh, these have some uh, efficiency problems as well because the pole basically is disrupting the airflow and uh, the blade design now I'm not going to pick on these guys right here, okay, in particular, but but maybe I guess I kind of am. You know, you notice uh, these guys actually sell 
a blade that's made out of metal that's just sheet metal bit and i that's not the most efficient design and, and i've gone over in some detail why it's not because basically um to get an effective transfer of power from the wind to your blade to your generator you need what's called an airfoil and the airfoil actually generates lift there's uh let me see if i can give an example of an airfoil okay so again we're back in wikipedia so i just thought i'd pick up a couple examples of of airfoils here we have you know several different types and, and they each have their purpose right you can kind of see how the wind you know bends around this foil it'll create a, a low pressure area up here on top and that's what actually gives like an airplane the lift and you know the difference between having an airfoil for a wind generator and not having one is pretty huge actually you know that you'll know when you get it right when the tower when the wind's really blowing hard the tower is being pushed on disproportionate to what it would even if you had a solid piece of let's say uh plywood the same diameter as your as your wind generator blade significantly more and this is what give helicopters and all that their lift and so this is working on some on some pretty major physics here as you can see i don't understand any of this stuff but i'm sure it's got something to do with the air airfoil uh derivation of thin airfoil theory uh, whatever <laughs> i just know they work because uh, i've compared the two so going back to the blade you know the how many blades it is important to note that the three blades are the most efficient because every time you add a blade you are capturing a little bit more wind but you're also disrupting the blade that's directly behind it the the airstream of you know of the blade directly behind it and that's why by just simply adding a whole bunch more blades you're not getting the desired effect okay and i realize that somebody somewhere is going to ask hey well what about these uh you know these water pumping windmills well it's uh this is an entirely different principle that's being used here and that principle is called drag as opposed to the principle of a wind generator uh, these operate very slow rpms and and in this and in this instance the 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 key objective is to generate as much torque as you possibly can to to actually uh, drive the gearbox and then pull the rod up and down to pump the water and these don't need to spin real real fast in effect uh, they're using the same principle like like a sailboat would whereas a wind generator is using the principle of let's say uh, an airplane or a helicopter you, you certainly wouldn't use this principle of of drag um, and many 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 blades to lift a helicopter off off the ground most of us have observed helicopters and we see you know that they have you know at most maybe four rotors and you know the main reason why they use so many rotors in some of these home build designs is they take a standard alternator and they put a they they put a permanent magnet inside that alternator and that almost always creates a situation where you you have a lot of cogging and and if you were to take your fingers and try to physically turn that shaft um, it would be very difficult to actually spin it and and this is the enemy of a, of a well-designed wind generator this is this necess necessitates the high torque startup which hence the reason for so many blades because you just can't get these things to spin unless you put these big giant blades on there or a whole bunch of smaller blades and then you can generate enough torque to actually get the thing going and here's an example of one of those permanent you know permanent magnet cores and i'm not saying this is a bad idea I, i'm saying that this is a great idea and you know in all reality because you're taking something that's actually designed as a as a three-phase alternator that's you know can last many many years in a car and and you're just modifying it to work as a wind generator um, maybe they make a core a slant core that actually you know eliminates the cogging but i haven't seen one yet um and if i'm wrong if you guys know of one please uh let me know in the comments if if you guys have purchased a slant core that has no cogging or very very little cogging at that and i'll promptly purchase one and feature it on my videos no look at there there i am a couple of my videos and and this brings me to another topic the low wind alternator or the low wind uh wind generator now you know it, it's kind of an oxymoron because wind generators are not really 
designed to work at peak efficiency in low wind unless that's all you're hoping for is low wind and then you can design something around just capturing low wind and low wind only but bear in mind that the energy is derived by the cube and it's basically taking the kinetic energy of the wind and transferring it uh, through the rotors into the alternator and uh, I just pulled up a random site here energy fundamentals physics of wind turbines and uh, hopefully maybe this will kind of describe how everything works I know just from studying the little bit of study that I've done that when you double the size of a rotor let's say this is a let's say this this rotor right here is a three foot rotor and let's double it into a six foot rotor you have just you've not doubled the power of that wind turbine you've you've brought it up to a factor of eight eight times more power can be generated for something that's twice its size and that's how kinetic energy works now every time you double the wind speed you bring up the amount the available power by a factor of four and so you know when you're looking at uh, like a four foot wind generator you you know um theoretically you know let's say at 27 mile an hour winds or something like that you can only get like 300 watts you know peak out of something like that or expect to anyways and then therefore a six foot rotor at at peak energy output would be somewhere around 900 watts okay and uh, and so on and so forth and if you were to double that again and go to a 12 foot you could expect around 3600 watts but this is in a perfect world and you never get that much because of all of the losses um, and realistically for especially for home builds like i built a, a 10 footer that the design criteria on that one was around a thousand watts 20 some odd mile an hour winds and and that's what you want to design it for you don't want to design it for low winds because you're not going to really get anything out of that. I mean, if you know, in a 12 mile an hour wind, if you're making 50 watts, what are you going to make in six mile an hour? You know, that's half the wind speed. It's going to be four times less. You know, so you take four times less than 50 is what? 25? 25 watts. That's all you're getting. I mean, buy a solar panel. Don't go through all the trouble of putting up, you know, putting out all that money to build a wind generator. Um, if you don't have the wind to actually drive it. So there's a lot of misconceptions out there as far as and how much power can be, you know, brought out. Before you, you purchase one, I would suggest, strongly suggest that you read some of Hugh Pigeot's literature on wind generators. And this is his website. It, this is, he's somewhat, this guy's kind of brilliant, actually. He, he single-handedly powered this entire island here. He, he, he developed this design, this axial flux uh, wind generator design I mean it's, this is his brainchild and it's it's they're all over the web now you, you can see all kinds of people building these things and and I actually built a 5k and a 1k uh, version of the of the very same thing and they work fantastic they really do and this guy will reading his stuff you can get a realistic expectation of what you know what to look for and and that's really how, where you want to start you want to start where someone uh, is, is giving you, you know, uh, the real scoop, basically. And it looks like he's added quite a bit of stuff to his website here. And uh, here's a homemade one flying. These are all real similar in design. Uh, but, you know, if, if you're not going to build and you're, you're just going to purchase, this is still a good website to go through and, and read all about designs. I think they're making, this is the Pankel, I believe, washing machine motor parts. I just recently bought an Istabreeze, and I, I will be doing a video on that here real soon. And that was um, my choice. I chose to buy it because of a video I watched from a fella, uh, Toys for Watts. You guys might want to check him out. Um, he's he's got he's got a pretty good little setup. He 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 put like four wind generators up that he all that he he bought every one on eBay. And one of them's an Istabreeze I-1500. And uh, he might have five by now. I don't know. And anyways, uh, he compares them side by side. And you can see as the wind's blowing, which one's making power and which one's not. It's, I mean, the guy deserves a lot more views, really, in my opinion, because it's showing you exactly what you need to know. And hey, I, I really hope all this helps out. And if you, know, if you got any value out of this, uh, you know, please give it a thumbs up and uh, hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you very much.